Tom Clark's 6M Podcast is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to Tom Clark's 6M Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Clark, and in this episode, I'm joined by co-host, Phil Lindsay. Star Wars Universe, it's one of those things, one of those intangible things that means a lot to a lot of people. I personally grew up with the original trilogy. I'm sure I've said it on this podcast many times in the past. I saw A New Hope in the theater. I was but a wee lad. I was a toddler, not even barely a toddler, so no wisecracks from the audience here. But I did see the original films in the theaters as they were happening. I have a soft spot in my heart for this franchise. I love Star Wars. I love this universe. I really, truly do. There was another set of films that came out after the original trilogy. We don't talk about those. But then they brought back... They I only said that to Pop Phil. Then they came back and said, well... Let's sell all this stuff to Disney and let's make some new movies. Then we got another trilogy and we've got other movies since then. Now, depending on your take, depending on your opinion here, kids, you may or may not be a fan of this. Okay. This is pretty uh, uh, divisive stuff, if I can say, or it can be because, you know, middle-aged white dudes tend to love what they love. And if you mess with it, ah, you incur the wrath of said middle-aged white dudes. I consider myself a middle-aged white dude. Let me just tell you. In my head, it's like, well, you didn't take away the first trilogy. I'm good. It's like the old Michael Bay comparison with the Transformers. I still have the cartoon, the animated series. I still have the comics. I'm good. Uh, You ruined the movies, but you didn't ruin it for me because I don't care about your movies. That's your interpretation of the franchise. So... It, it, you know, maybe a big difference here with the Star Wars universe. This thing is based in the theaters. It started out as a movie property, not an animated series property. Maybe that's splitting hairs. I don't know. But today we're talking about Solo. That's your segue. It's all I had. Today we're talking about Solo. No, not that one. (laughs) This is another one. If you're waiting for Harrison Ford in this movie, you're going to be waiting a long, long time because he ain't here. He ain't showing up. Not in this movie. So, yeah, we're going to get into it. I can't wait to hear Phil's take. We've never really talked about this film. We've kind of glossed over it in previous episodes, but never really dove into it. Solo, also called Solo, a Star Wars story, has been described as an American space Western film And, of course, it centers on Star Wars character Han Solo. Directed by Ron Howard. Man, we're going to get into that. Produced by Lucasfilm, of course. Distributed by Walt Disney Studios. It is the second Star Wars anthology film following Rogue One. You can find that in the archives, kids. Excellent movie. Really fun episode. This movie, written by Jonathan Kasdan and Lawrence Kasdan. Of course, based on characters created by... George Lucas. This movie produced by Kathleen Kennedy. Who else? Starring an assorted cast of characters. This movie was released initially May 10th, 2018, Los Angeles, and then May 25th, 2018, to a nationwide release. Total running time, 135 minutes. The budget for this film was between 275 to 300 million dollars. The box office was 393.2 million. We're going to get to that too. But that is your lowdown. For Solo, Phil, I don't know if you would classify yourself as a Solo defender, but how long has it been since you've seen this film, and do you th- do you believe it deserves some of the criticism that it gets today? I I like Solo. Um, I remember seeing it in the theater and thinking, like, why were people so down on this movie? Um, I like it, and in retrospect, it has a lot of what I enjoy about some of the other newer Disney uh, movie stuff. Like, uh, well, maybe 
I wouldn't say maybe not the movie stuff, but maybe some of the other stuff that they've done since Disney's took it, taken over. It's very similar in some ways to Mandalorian and the Obi-Wan show in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I feel like it's up there with the top stuff that uh, Disney has done since they come back. I mean, I, I feel like the top of the top is Rogue One. I think that's the best Disney Star Wars movie. Um but I feel like Solo's not as bad as people make it out to be. I don't know why people hated it so much. First off, you're totally right about Rogue One. Anybody that disputes that's dead wrong. Excellent film. Solo is a, it looks freaking great. It's beautiful. It looks old school. I mean, it it kind of fits with the original trilogy in terms of the look of it. The original Stormtroopers, you know, everything's, you know, dirty and, and grimy and he's in the mud quite a bit in the opening scenes of this film. And, you know, it looks very retro. That's one of the things about Rogue One that really struck me that got me excited was the original uniforms, the original yeah. look of the Empire and everything. I mean, dude, I'm with it. It looks great. Dude, it looks from a distance like a Star Wars film. But then when you start peeling the layers of the onion is when people had a problem with it. I mean... What, in your opinion, what do you think it is that people have a problem with with this movie? What have you heard the most? I'm I'm not sure what it is. Um, and I actually like now I've gotten so far away from some of the criticism of it. I'm not sure what it is, and I think at, at this point I'm so, um, I don't know. I'm so um, in my own brain about what I think of this movie that I can't even really see it. Like, cause I I feel like there are a lot of things to like about this movie. This movie's already been out five years. Does that blow your mind? Yeah. Jeez. Well, as we said, Harrison's not near this movie. This ain't your daddy's Han Solo, kids. This is another guy. And he is Alden... Alden Einrich? Einrich? Because I can't get his name. I I keep... You know what I keep thinking of? Aldrich Killian, the villain from from, uh, Iron Man 3. (laughs) Guy Pierce. I can't help it. It's who I keep hearing in my head. It's it's um Ald Alden Ironreich. Yes? I think that's right. Ironreich. Yeah. Yeah, from like if you squint hard enough, this guy is a dead giveaway for Emil Hirsch. Mm-hmm. He is actually. I mean, like, if you look at this guy and squint and look the wrong way, it's like, yeah, this is it's Emil Hirsch, right? Um, and like in a bizarro parallel universe you can see emil hirsch doing this movie that's a good call i never thought about it that way so let's dive into the cast because i'm anxious to get to this all right but you know all nine reich has the unenviable task it's it, dude i got one comparison for you and you're gonna agree you know brandon ralph yep. had an impossible task right you're not just you're not just, oh, I'm going to play the character now. No, 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 no. It's not just the character, dude. It's the guy that played the character. Like, it's some big shoes to fill, man. I mean, did this yeah. guy really even have a fair shot from the beginning of this? Um, no, I, I think that he had some big shoes to fill, and I think some people were always going to criticize him no matter what. I thought mm-hmm. he did a pretty good job. I th- I, th- I thought he did a good job of making a role his own and not trying to be like a parody or too much of a copy of Harrison Ford. Um, I think that he, I think he did a great job of conveying all of the uh, hopefulness and the wide eyedness that Han didn't have later in the franchise. Hmm. Yeah, dude. Good call. Yeah. You know what? I I'm totally fine with him in this movie. Like I legit yeah. have no problem with him at all. Yeah, I mean, he comes off as a very brash and uh, very naive um, young man a lot through this movie. And you can see how later he becomes Han Solo. Yeah, for sure. Um, and kids, if you got lost earlier, how are you listening to this show? You don't know what I'm talking about. Brandon Routh, of course, had to replace, not had to replace, but was cast uh, as Superman. And basically, in, in Brian Singer's film, Superman Returns, basically... Phil, to this day, to this day, I guess he was told, or I've always believed he was told, listen, just go do Christopher Reeve. Just go do that. Like, yeah, because that's what he did. And Brandon Ralph, by the way, guys, is an excellent actor. He's very, very good. 
There he is. So you know what I mean? Like, hoy. But like that's that's kind of what happens with with Einreich here is that, oh well, you know this guy Harrison Ford, he's always been Han Solo, but now you gotta go do that. But dude, to your point, I think he was he was very understated. There dude, his smile is similar, that smirk that he has, that sarcasm, dude, it's pretty close. Yeah, I, I don't want to say that he's almost a different character, but I feel like this is such a different this is such a different part of Han's life, and I feel like he fit that role perfectly. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, good call. For sure. Uh yeah, I think he looks really good. He sounds great. He's not really trying to do a you know, Han's voice or Han. I can't wait to get into that. Hmm. So uh <laughs> Yeah, he's not really doing Han's voice, which is fine. You know, so here's the issue I've got right off the bat. And, I, you know, we haven't got through the gas yet. How many years is Solo set before? Okay, so it's 10 years prior to the events of A New Hope. This is just semantics, Phil. But in my head, I'm thinking, can I picture Alden 10 years from this movie with a different haircut looking like, and, and who cares, Phil? But in my head, <laughs> I was thinking that through the movie because I'm such a nerd for continuity. Do you bump into stuff like that or do you not worry about it? I mean, I mean, I, I think it's one of those things where you have to suspend disbelief, man. Cause I saw people saying the same thing with uh, the Obi-Wan show where it's like, all right, well we're getting closer to the age where the original actor would have been in that movie. So I don't know. Does Ewan McGregor look close to this guy now at that age? And I'm like, no, nah, I don't know. You can have that debate, but I, I, I think you don't really need to. Yeah. It's just semantics. It's just me getting uh, wound up in it. What do you think about spotting the Kylo Ren helmet here? What do you think about that? That was, if you, if you, if you don't, you know, if I'd actually forgotten that bit, Rio's Rio's helmet, right? Wait, Rio's helmet. Yeah, because I'm rewatching it again right now. I must have yeah. missed it. Um, Kylo Ren's helmet is later in the movie. No, no, no. Uh, what Rio's wearing is very, very similar to the Knights of Ren. Oh, very similar. In fact, I never really noticed it until watching the movie again today. Yeah, I never noticed that. That's crazy. Yeah, very close. You know, and you know what? To be honest, it could have just been a very subtle nod. I don't know. It, it Maybe it doesn't mean anything. I'll have to screenshot it, send it to you. Oh, dude, that's, yeah. Maybe it's just the angle. Maybe it's the angle that it looks like that. So... No, I think he's great. I, I don't, you know, I don't know if any criticism is leveled at him per se. I'll be honest with you. I think the majority of the criticism is because we heard very early on that there were reshoots happening. They were rewriting the script, right? We we kept hearing that this is, you know, this is getting like handed off or you know, it's being redone or they're taking their time. And look, man, just because you hear news of reshoots does not necessarily mean the movie's going to tank. Like this one didn't make any money, right? But like it doesn't necessarily always mean that something bad's going to happen, but it is, I, I guess people take it as a sign to mean, well, it's not looking good. I mean, do you remember hearing about this and what was your feeling when you started hearing these stories coming, going around? I mean, this did feel like one of those movies. Uh, is this ever going to really happen? Cause this thing went through several different rewrites and reshoots. Um, there's a lot of trouble around the production of this movie. Yeah, there is big time. I mean, I was worried. I'm gonna be honest with you. When I when I heard about this, I was worried about it because I thought, man, I don't know how I feel about this now because it's like, ah. So so the story goes, kids, that the first attempt um, at an appearance of Han Solo as a kid was present during the pre-production of Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, and that was kind of where the idea came from in 2002, showing an early draft of a young solo that takes part in the battle of, of on Kashyyyk. And then it was kind of, it, the, the idea kind of went from there. And then, 
you know, years later, this thing begins to become a reality. There's reshoots happening, as we just said. So yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff going on, going on here and we're going to get into it, but, um, back to this cast, man, like, again, we're talking about Iron Reich who had the, uh, again, if, if you're going to replace Harrison Ford as Han Solo, good luck to you. I thought he did a bang up job. I have no, no real criticisms of him at all. Uh, what's your take on Woody Harrelson, Tobias Beckett? Does he stick out to you at all, or does he just fit right in? Do you think it looks to me like it feels to me like he's just part of this universe? Did he feel that way to you? I really like the Beckett character, and I kind of hated that he met the demise that he did because I wanted him to stick around. Mm, same, yeah. And, and supposedly the character was based on Long John Silver <laughs> from Treasure Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like I really that. like Beckett. Um, but yeah, I but he fits that mode of uh like the scoundrel characters that uh Han Solo is based off of. And you can see throughout the movie how many lessons he's learned from him and you can see how he kind of takes his cues from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At uh I, I thought he was good. I mean, there's let's see, who was it that was in uh The Mandalorian that was um uh, stand up comic? That's in the Mandalorian. Oh, uh, Bill Burr. Bill Burr. I was blanking. I was, I'll, dude, I love me some Bill Burr. I, I love that guy. Does he fit in the Star Wars universe with that accent, Boston? Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, he was great. Don't get me wrong. But like, you know, Woody Harrelson doesn't stay. And Woody Harrelson has that country accent when he wants mm-hmm. to have it. So like, but dude, I thought he fit in great here, man. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought that original crew of uh, scoundrels at the earlier in the movie were great with him and Thandie Newton and um, I can't remember the uh, the pilot they had. He's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, let's see. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah, we've got information here. We'll get to the to the rest of the crew here. Yeah, he was great, man. I'm like you. I I kind of hated that he went out the way he did. But to be fair, all these characters, well, they're not all dead, but like with it, with it taking place so far back in continuity, like I had always kind of, cause see, I never really got into the novels and I never really got into like the various animated series. I just assumed that Beckett was an animated character. You've been a little bit more into the animated series with Star Wars, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I've watched a bit of it. I, I, and I think Beckett is a totally new character. I haven't seen him in anything else. Yeah, I think he was created just for the movie, which, by the way, dude, is a little nuts considering how many characters they've created in the extended universe of books and novels and animated series. It's kind of crazy. Um, Amelia Clark as Kira. And, you know, it's Princess Leia before there's a Princess Leia, right? But, like, dude, it's so odd seeing Han Solo with her, with his guard down, and, you know, he's, he's still a sarcastic, you know, a-hole when he needs to be, or that's kind of his personality. But, like, man, this is a different guy. And, I, you know, you just assume that he's battle-hardened by the time A New Hope gets here, that he's become that smug and cocky smuggler from Corel. But, like, I don't know, dude. Uh, it's It's so odd to see him here with her. I thought she was great in this movie, man. What's your take on her? Uh, I think she's great. I think she is... Uh... In a lot of ways, everything that uh, Leia is not. Mm. And I think that's why she works so well in this movie. Um, I think if you want to buy into uh, Han having a love interest early on in the franchise that broke his heart bad enough that he would be who he is later in the franchise, uh, this worked for that reason. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. And I mean... Did you see the twist coming? I mean, did you have a good feeling about her or did you kind of know that there was going to be a twist with her at the end? Of course, a twist had to come because they couldn't end up together. Um, I didn't I didn't see the twist coming that she would uh, turn on him. But uh, something had to happen because they couldn't end up together. Yeah, it's a good call. I mean, we thought we had the twist, and it turns out she was helping, but it turns out she wasn't helping him. Beckett knew the whole time. Like, Han didn't know, but Beckett knew. 
Yeah. I guess Han was just, you know, clueless about that. Just was thinking the best of her because he loved her. Yeah. And I think that that's why you, uh, later throughout, throughout this movie, you see, he learned so many lessons from Beckett. Mm. I think that's why he kind of took the, the, the wrong lesson to learn from him and that you can't trust anyone because he ended up being right about her. Dude, what about, uh, man, we're seriously scared. What about that death scene at the end with Beckett, man? Like Han Chen was like, well, you had to, I've done the same thing. And then he has, he has like a nice little death scene. That's, it's such a twisted little thing to happen, man, but it kind of makes sense for what's going on with these characters, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that Beckett liked Han, and I think that uh he he definitely had uh gotten to a point where he he, he believed what he was selling. Like he did not trust anybody, but he liked Han. And I think that he saw him in a he saw him in a good light, and I think they had like a weird father son relationship here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Good call. And like, because anytime you see like an origin story, if there's a mentor, you kind of assume that the main character is going to begin taking traits from that from that mentor at some point. So I guess you can say that he did in a weird way, kind of become Beck- Beckett down the road. Yeah, I, I think that he learned a lot of good lessons from Beckett, but unfortunately, like I said, I think he learned some um, bad habits from Beckett as well. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. Let's see. Let's talk about the guy that I know we're ready to talk about him. Donald Glover is Lando Calrissian. I mean, forget for a second that Alden was told, like he was told, like he was called. You know what I mean? Hey, Alden, you're going to go do this. Of course, he auditioned anyway. (laughs) But it's this idea of you're going to replace this charismatic, you know, this character that's been around for years and years and years, and he's beloved by millions. Dude, Donald Glover essentially took Billy D. Williams' character, which it's Lando Calrissian, man. Like one of the greatest characters in the history of the Star Wars universe. I love this character so much. When I when you hear Donald Glover speaking, you don't see, you hear him before you see him in this movie, dude. He sounds just like Billy D. Williams, man. How great is he in this movie? Um, Donald Glover tries his best to steal, steal this movie every chance he gets. Um, yeah. He is he is amazing in this role. Um, I don't know if they're still doing the Lando project with him, but I really hope they are. Uh, I really want to see more of him in this role. He was just great throughout this movie. I, wasn't there a talk of doing a Lando spinoff film? Um, I know that there was talk of doing a show. I don't know if it was a movie, though. Mm. And it, it sounds like the the show is still happening. I'm not sure. Um. But yeah, I mean, from the second we saw to him in the trailer, I was like, this is this is gold. Yeah, so good. I mean, he's so good. He's an absolute natural. You don't cast anybody else here. There's just no one else that could have done this like he does. This is uh this is the guy, kids. This is the one that, you know, was sexing up Leia when he first laid eyes on her, right in front of Han or Han. I love that he intentionally mispronounced his name. And Han's like, it's Han, but that's all right. <laughs> like, he just lets it go. And then from that point on, it's Han. Because that's, I guess, that's how Billy D pronounced it, and he refused to say otherwise. It's like, did no one tell him? I've always been curious about that. It's like, you know, it's Han, right? I think it's Han. And that's how he pronounced it through all the movies. It's great, I mean, man. man. Who's going to correct Billy D Williams? He's, he's, he's cooler <laughs> than you, man. Very true. He, he he tells me his hand. I'm just gonna be like, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, <laughs> it makes it makes Lucas look at the script. And go well, well, he's got a point. So yeah, that's fine. I, I'm not losing any sleep over. He's freaking great. He's great here. What about the chemistry between him and Alden? Do you feel it here? Is it working for you? Um, I think it works, but I think it's mostly because Donald is doing such great work. Hmm. I mean. He's just great. I mean, it, there's just several scenes with him in it, like the introduction with him, and he's sitting there playing cards. He's just so great. When when he comes out after he wins the card game, we find out he cheated, um, and he's got the cape on. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> uh, it, so is all right. The dice, or the die, the dice, the dice. So 
is it shoehorned too much in? Is it a little too much on the nose? Do you think it's okay? Like, what's your thoughts on that? Because, man, they really lean into it in the third of the new trilogy, which is uh, well, The Last Jedi. They really leaned into it with the dice, man. Well, not The, not the Last Jedi. It was the second film, right? Um, or Last Jedi was it? Man, I'm getting that. Uh, yeah, Last getting, Jedi was the second film. That's right, that's right, because Rise of Skywalker was the third one, right? So Right. Are the, it, 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 this the dude, the, the the fascination with the dice is beyond me. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, I I'm not having a hard time with it. Maybe I am. What's your take on the dice, man? Is it just too much on the nose here? I don't think it is. I I do think sometimes they try too hard to reference nostalgic things or you know explain away something. Like I mean, the explanation for why his name is Han Solo early in the movie is just like uh, it's kind of a cool hint. But but do we really need it? <laughs> yeah why couldn't solo just have been his last name or his family or whatever his tribe or whatever they were calling it i'll be honest with you i didn't bump into that too much i actually was okay with that no i didn't bump into it but i i do feel like they do that a lot to try and explain things from the original trilogy mm. yeah yeah that's true let's see um uh, Tandy Newton as Val, as you mentioned before, part of the crew. We didn't get to see her too much, but man, Beckett really felt it when she died. I mean, she kind of had to sacrifice herself. So uh, that was important. Um, again, didn't have much to do here, but I thought what she did was was fine, was good. What about the voice of L3? L337. Phoebe Waller Bridge does the voice of this droid that basically leads everyone to believe that Lando is maybe maybe having relations with this droid. <laughs> that's what hey listen, that's what I inferred from it. That's what they led you to believe. We got SpaceX happening here, Phil. Hmm. Um it seems like every Star Wars movie has to have either a comical sidekick. Or like a wisecracking droid, or a ser- some kind of droid of some nature. Um, again, I ask: Is L three a bit too much at times, or is it okay? Uh, yeah, I think it's at least different because uh, we've never we've never seen a droid um, speak the way that she does. We've never seen a droid that's kind of like sentient and has like free will. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it is something different, um, but ah. Uh, I could see why some people would think it's a bit too on the nose. I mean, the way she walks and moves, it's just, it is a little bit on the nose. And you know, to be honest, Lando could have any woman he wants. I don't know why we're even teasing the idea of a sex droid here, but whatever. And man, he feels it when she dies too. And she dies like a human. Well, like, it reminds me of Peter Parker in uh, Infinity War when he's he's dying, he's dusting in front of Tony, <laughs> like yeah. a kid. Yeah, I I do I do think that uh, that's one of the things that's so good about this movie is that um, we're not uh, we're not with these characters that long, but mm. uh, I think we feel the deaths. Like uh, even when uh, Thandie Newton's character dies early in the movie, I was like, oh no, like. And I mean, she was in the movie less time than L3 was. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think that that's a testament to the, the story they told in this movie and how much they got us to like some of these characters. That's fair. That's fair. I, I, I'll bite on that. I, I agree with that. So the idea here with L3 was to give the Falcon a personality. You guys saw the movie, you know what I'm talking about. So L3 dies. And they upload the droid's consciousness into the Falcon. And they decided to connect it to a callback all the way back to Empire, in which the Falcon is described as having the most peculiar dialect. And supposedly this was done to give the Falcon a personality that is used with this amazing character played by Phoebe. So, and you know, to be fair... Harrison Ford as Han Solo called the Falcon she and her and baby through the years in these movies. When uh, there's, I forget which movie, I think it's the new hope when he says, don't worry, she'll hold together. And then he turns back and says, come on, baby, hold together. 
So I guess that's a little wink and nod. But to be fair, how many people in the theater got that? Do you think anybody connected the dots like that? Or was it after reflecting on it later, you think? No, I don't think. I, I think that was one of those unspoken things. Because, um, I mean, it, anybody that has a hot rod or anybody that, you know, it, it's always a woman. Like, uh, men always try to, you know, call a car or, like, their guitar or anything a woman. <laughs> I've got four bass guitars. They're all named after women. That's that's yeah. just yeah, that's fair. Uh, let's see, Junus Junus Soatmo, who's a Finnish actor and former professional basketball player. Who would have thunk it? Hmm. Plays Chewbacca in this movie, taking the role from Peter Mayhew, the freaking legendary Peter Mayhew. First, he did it as a body double in The Force Awakens. Um, and he later did it uh, as the lead in Star Wars Last Jedi. And then he's back here in a solo. And also he portrayed Chewbacca in The Rise of Skywalker. Again, Phil, I don't, I don't know if, I mean, kids all over the world grew up knowing this, this franchise. I'm sure it had to have been a, a thrill for him to step into this as well. But man, seeing Chewbacca like in that mud, dude, that fight scene with Han is freaking great. Like, I'm here for it. When he's throwing him around in that mud, so good. Like, dude, I really, really love this. The first time these two met is actually pretty poetic considering how far they've come uh, from their first meeting till to the point where Han's killed. I mean, this is really good stuff, man. What do you think about this? Yeah, I thought um, that scene was perfect. Because, um, I mean, when you do think how how would he get linked up with somebody like Chewbacca, it's like, yeah, I mean, this guy, why would this guy be following you around as kind of your sidekick? This guy could rip you in half at any point. Um, so it had to be a point where at some point you did him a favor or you saved his life or, you know, you talked your way out of a situation with him. Because <laughs> there's no way in the world this guy would just follow you around because he because he doesn't need to. And he's he's growling like like a Wookiee. And he says, you and I free to make by secret battle of pretend because he can't speak it very well. <laughs> that was fun stuff, man. I really enjoyed this. I mean, dude, there's a couple things you have to nail here. If you're going to do a Han Solo film, if you're not going to get Harrison Ford, if you're going to go back, you got to do two things. You got to nail the relationship between Han and Lando, which I feel like they did. But you got to nail the relationship between Han and Chewie. And if you don't hit that, this film doesn't work at all. I mean, I, again, it's got criticism. It's got haters, but I mean, ha, I don't know how anybody could point at the di the dynamic between these two characters and be upset with it because I thought it was spot on. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought the stuff with him and, and Chewbacca throughout the movie was really good. Um, I think the moment where they meet um, works. I think the moment in the mind where um, he trusts him to to go and save those other Wookies and come back is also was also very touching and I think that it 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 works. Um and I don't think the work the movie works without it. Hundred percent. Yeah. That scene where he's helping the other Wookiees, that's really good stuff. I thoroughly enjoyed that. We've also got from the MCU the Vision or Viz as we call him as well, Paul Bettany as Dryden Voss. Now Little nugget here for you kids. Michael K. Williams was originally cast in this, but was removed from the final film. He could not come back uh, to the set in time during the film's reshoots. So Paul Bettany was cast in his place. Uh, supposedly the character was a motion capture alien. And Williams has described this character as half mountain lion, half human. Hmm. Yikes. I think we got... No disrespect to to Williams. If it had just been Williams the actor, cool. But a half mountain lion, half human? I mean, you're not trading down by going to Paul Bettany. He's fantastic. What do you think of him here, though? What do you think of him as the heavy? Yeah, I, now that you, you say that, that's so weird because we get this, like, these prosthetic scars all over... Uh, Bettany's face and I'm like you could have just used you could have just used just 
real life Michael K. Williams. He's got a real scar on his face. Um, you wouldn't have had to do any prosthetics. And he's a great actor. You mm-hmm. didn't have to make this guy CG. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. He's a great presence on his own. You didn't need to do any of that. Like, it's a weird, <laughs> weird choice to go. Now we're going to make him like this alien character. Ah, uh, kind of a, it's a choice. <laughs> yeah, supposedly Williams couldn't return due to scheduling conflicts. So I guess the reshoots were going to happen and he had already moved on to another project. So I wonder if this means there's footage out there of him or if they hadn't got to his scenes. I don't know what that means. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, of course, rest in peace to Michael K. Williams. Um, mm. But yeah, I think he would have been great in the role if he just used just you just used him you just used him in live action footage you didn't need cg it's weird uh but no i think paul bettany was great here i think that uh we're so used to seeing him as a good guy in mcu um it was interesting to see him in a villain role um and i thought he nailed it yeah for sure i thought he did uh, i thought he did great john favreau is the voice of rio which i don't know if i knew that which is cool. Linda Hunt is Lady Proxima. Lydia Hunt. Lydia or Linda Hunt. Yes. Is Lady Proxima. Wasn't crazy about the name. Proxima Midnight's Avengers. So, I mean, you know, is what it is. Aaron Kellyman is uh, Infus Nest. And she was also in the Falcon and Winter Soldier. So... The, what little bit we got to see of her here, she's really good. Let's see. Clint Howard is here because his brother's directing the film. <laughs> Phil, that's how that goes, which I love me some Clint Howard. The guy's awesome. Anthony Daniels, of course, C-3PO, cameos as Tack in this movie, T-A-K. Warwick Davis is briefly here in his role from The Phantom Menace as Weasel, a cloud rider. Tom Clark 6M Podcast is sponsored in part by Radius Law Group. Every day, Radius helps individuals, families, small businesses, and nonprofit organizations throughout North Carolina, Florida, and Pennsylvania resolve their legal issues by providing effective legal counsel in the areas of estate planning, as well as elder law and Medicaid. Radius Law holds the radical belief that working with a lawyer can indeed be enjoyable. So give them a call at 1-800-519-5667 for more information and tell them that Tom Clark 6M Podcast sent you. All right, let's talk about one of the big reveals, the big reveal in the end, was Darth Maul. It's Ray Park as well there, Phil. Um, It's Sam Witwer providing the voice, reprising the role from the Clone Wars and Rebels animated TV series. So it's a nod. It's a wink and a nod to the animated series. But Darth Maul's dead there, Phil. How do you know? Um, how do they explain his resurrection? Do we know this? Because I don't know the story behind that. It happened off camera, obviously. Um. Well. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the time period, but of course, in the an animated series, we find out that Darth survived uh, the fight with uh, Obi Wan. And he eventually comes back with like cybernetic appendages. Um, I don't know how the the timelines line up, but. uh, You know what? That's fair because we know that Han's older than Leia. But no, that no, no, that can't be because I'm doing the math in my head. If this is 10 years now, it can't be. Yeah. I mean, dude, retrofitting a property into an established universe is not easy. I think that's what a lot of people have issues with or take issues with is because longtime fans sit back and say, okay, let's see if they can do this. And dude, a lot of times it doesn't work. Maybe that's part of, you know, the hate that's leveled at some of these some uh, at films of this nature is that fans are going, dude, this doesn't fit. This doesn't work. Like, I don't know, man, but you know, like Disney's got all this money. They own the IP. They're going to make this stuff regardless. So like, I guess at some point it doesn't matter. They'll make it fit. I don't know. I don't know. I compare it to like 
you know, in, instead of finding the right puzzle piece, you take the one you have and take scissors because you're going to make it fit. Yeah, but that's not the right piece. You're just making it fit. Like, I don't know, man. Again, yeah. maybe I'm too much of a nerd about this stuff. Yeah, I thought the I thought the mall reveal was cool. Um, I thought it was a nice way to uh, tie Crimson Dawn and Kira back to the Sith without having to, to attach her to a Sith that was already being used. Um, it's just if you don't watch any of the animated stuff and you don't watch any of the or read any of the stuff outside of the movies, it is a little bit confusing because like, wait a minute, that guy's dead. Uh, but yeah, I think again, I don't, I don't know how the timelines match up, but uh, we're we're led to believe that he does survive the events of Phantom Menace, and he comes back looking for revenge against Obi Wan in the Clone Clone War series. Hmm. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. Um, like I said, man, I don't want to get too wrapped up in that. I, I find myself doing that quite a bit. So let's talk about, um, the plot here. Um, the plot question is a good one. I think it's important for a lot of these movies, like, cause forget the fact that it's set in space. It's a space opera. It's a space Western, all the stuff with it. We love about this universe. So we're getting Han's backstory for the first time. Phil, let me ask you this, that regardless of this movie, did we need Han's backstory? Wasn't he maybe a, a cooler character because we didn't know a lot of his past? I don't think we needed his backstory, no. <laughs> that was definitely mm -hmm. what I thought when I first saw this announced. I'm like, do we really need a Han Solo prequel, though? <laughs> that was kind of my thought as well. And I'm a Han Solo guy, huge, huge fan of this franchise. He's always been my favorite character. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it feels like it does. It, and you know, honestly, I know the movie was like critically acclaimed and they're making a sequel. I still submit we never needed a Joker film, but that's just me talking. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that Joker film. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, 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 He's not really a character like Boba Fett where there was always this... Uh, popularity to him despite the fact that he didn't have a lot of screen time or a fully uh drawn out character arc um Han is one of the the biggest characters in the franchise he got plenty of screen time he got an entire character arc for three movies um mm -hmm. I don't know if we needed a prequel um but at the same time I did enjoy this movie yeah, I, I I enjoyed it too. I just didn't know if we, yeah, for sure. I don't think we needed it. I mean, there's a lot of things that are made that way that are, you know, it just, I don't know, money grab. I do, I don't know if this, I, I don't know. I, do you consider this film a money grab? Does it feel like that to you? Uh, I, I, I think you can consider it a money grab in a loose sense that it's very clear that they wanted to make more Star Wars movies and, they want to capitalize on the nostalgia and the popularity of the original uh, cast. And out of, out of the original cast, who could you make something about that didn't have a lot of content out there about him? Probably Han Solo. Hmm. So, uh, Ironreich, which I could, again, be mispronouncing, kids, so Harrison Ford supposedly was very high on his performance, called the film spectacular, said that he couldn't have been happier with Iron Rock's performance. Billy Dee Williams, however, was more critical of the film. <laughs> he said, yeah, he said, quote, I think that the reason they didn't have su the success they could have had is because they were going for something that was topical instead of an adventure that's far beyond those questions. If you're talking about this huge, incredible story, why lock yourself into this tiny moment between a character like Lando and his robot friend? Uh, that's fair. It's a fair question. In other interviews, he compliments other aspects of the film, including Glover's perceptions of Lando's gender fluidity. That kid is brilliant, is what Billy D said. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I guess I didn't pick up some of the gender fluid stuff he was doing, um, but I I thought I thought of all the people that would watch this and be happy, it would be Billy D. Williams, because I thought Lando was one of the highlights of the movie. I agree. Totally. 
Einreich has said, we're talking about the future, right, of what could potentially happen in the future here. He confirmed his contract deal to appear as Han for two more films, giving the studio the option to pursue a sequel to Solo or a feature film or feature him in other anthology films in a supporting capacity. He said he would like any sequels to differentiate themselves from the previous Star Wars trilogies by being standalone in the vein of the Indiana Jones films rather than the direct follow-ups. Mia Clark also signed off for future installments. It's kind of like the MCU feel. You don't just play, you don't sign off for one movie. Now, whether or not they'll make anything, I mean, dude, do you think there that there'll be something? Do you believe that they'll go that route or we're not sure yet? Uh, I don't know. Um, I definitely don't think we're getting a, a solo sequel at this point. Um, I wouldn't have been upset at a sequel, uh, but I wouldn't mind seeing uh, him play the character again for something like the maybe a Disney plus show or something like if we do get this Lando show, I wouldn't mind seeing him show up as a cameo. Yeah, dude, it's very much up in the air. I agree with you. And it's very much up in the air right now, honestly, as to what's going to happen. Donald Glover has supposedly said that um, he could imagine a spinoff. When I say this, you're going to love it. A spinoff Lando film. And he describes it as catch me if you can in space. <laughs> so- dude, him smooth talking his way in and out of, you know, different ports on different planets and and like the troopers coming showing up. Where is he? You just missed him. Like he legit left like five minutes ago. That that would be fun, dude. That'd be fun. I mean, if they were waiting on, you know, whether or not this movie was going to make bank, then there's never going to be any solo part two because it's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's see. On May twenty fifth, twenty twenty, fans started uh, using the hashtag hashtag Make Solo Two Happen to show their appreciation for the film and the second anniversary. Let's don't forget that was in the middle of COVID, at the height of COVID. Uh, high, viral hashtags may not do much for you, seeing as how no one could do anything in Hollywood at that time. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, just as we didn't need this film, do we need anything else? I'm going to say from this cast, but I don't mean it that to be negative. Do we need anything else here from these guys, man? What do you think? Uh, it depends on what it is. Uh, like I said, I would definitely be here for more stuff with Donald Glover starring as Lando. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if, if anything to take away from this movie, it's, we need more Donald Glover in this role. Yeah, he's great. He's really great. I mean, dude, again, I'm good with Alden as well. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Alden show up in something again. Uh, I do think with the with the Darth Maul cameo, it would be nice to see what happened with Kira because we don't we don't get a we don't get any kind of resolution to that that plot line. Yeah, and it's like uh, one of the issues I run into, dude, is this again. We're retrofitting things. She's great. And the character is pretty, pretty awesome. But like, evidently she didn't matter because we've never heard about her. Now we never heard about her because she was never created in the first place because they're creating these characters after the fact. So like, I think dude, that's why rogue one has a leg up on this film. Cause we've heard about the rogue squadron. We heard about the band of rebels that did what they did to get the plans to princess Leia aboard the ship that, that, you know, th- these, these rebels died to get the plans to her aboard that ship. So we already had a backstory. We already had a, these guys were legendary. So then we got to see them, but like, we don't know who, who, who she is. We don't know who Kira is. Cause we, again, she was created for this. Like to me, dude, where I'm sitting, that's where a lot of this stuff falls on its face is because there's no real backstory till you create it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I don't really mind that. That doesn't really, that doesn't really stop me from enjoying it. I think mm. rogue one works so well because it's perfect for a, uh, one and done story. It's mm. a, it's a very self-contained story. Um, the solo movie, it almost feels like they were trying to make it in hopes that they could tell, a. Uh, an entire story arc with it, hoping that they could get a sequel. And then when they didn't get a sequel, you've now got these dangly plot lines that you're never going to address again. 
Yeah, and I believe that's exactly what happened. That they thought it was going to, uh, it was going to become something more than what it was. So yeah, um, here's some fun facts for you, Phil. More than 500 creature designs were created for Solo, which shouldn't surprise me because that's the Star Wars universe. Um, as far as Iron Wright's taking taking Harrison for his place, he said, "I need. I had six months of auditions." Every audition involved a different scene, which was helpful, but it was a long process. Dude, it took them that long to decide. <laughs> that's nuts to me. I mean, that's uh, some big shoes to fill. So mm. I think they wanted to make sure that they uh, crossed, their, crossed their T's and dotted their I's on this. Uh, and I, th- I do think that they made the right choice of him. I, I do think that this was well cast. Hundred percent. I have I have no issue with any of the cast. I think they're all great. Um, this is a fun one. A total of thirty capes were created by the costume team for Lando Calrissian's closet. <laughs> yeah, it's great. That's awesome. His uh, his entire get up at the end when we we see him in the last scene of the movie where he's got that tropical <laughs> shirt on. He's got that white yes. cape over it. It's so great. <laughs> Feels like he's in the Bahamas, doesn't he? Yeah, it's great. Let's see. The exterior Millennium Falcon set built for The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi was repurposed for Solo. It weighs 31 tons. Wow. Yeah. Dude, what about the moments that we get in this film that are callbacks and remind you while you're watching this? Like the first time you see the Falcon is a pretty big moment. The first time Chewie joins Han in the cockpit of the Falcon, you get that throwback original Star Wars theme. They make a point to really dive into that you know, oh, oh, it's a big classic Star Wars moment, guys. Pay attention. I mean, I don't fault them for that. I'm cool with it. Um, and also, Phil, we get to see the Kessel Run, which yeah. par- Parsec is an estimate of light, not speed, right? So people get hung up on I don't care. It's fine. Yeah, I thought but, the Kessel Run scenes were really good. <laughs> so good. Um, I, I, I do think some of the, hey, look at this Easter egg thing do get a little bit uh tiresome at some point like hey that's how he got his gun or hey that's how he got his name or that's hey look look isn't that isn't that this character it's the it's the chess set and it's like oh okay yep that's right and once again chew is upset because he can't play the game <laughs> yeah uh, which, by the way, a Wookiee's lifespan is about 400 years, and he's 190-some years old in this movie. 193, I think. And when he tells him that, Han's like, you look great! <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I really yeah, enjoyed uh, that. We, we find out why the Falcon has the split in the middle, because he jettisoned the escape pod. Ah, good call. Yep, yep. Yep. Dude, I actually have a book somewhere in my office that's got it was it was released several years ago of like blueprints of like different uh it's it's Karelian class fighters or, or, and ships and of course the, the millennium falcons in there so yeah it's one of those nerdy things that are created that don't really serve a purpose except it just shows you some cool artwork but that's cool so i've seen different variations on the falcon and one of them was you know, the, the complete shape and no cut out in the, in the end. So I, I do like to explain that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I, I think the Kessel run, um, if anything about this movie, it's worth it just cause we get those Kessel run scenes. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It's good stuff. I mean, there's a lot to like in this movie, man. I mean, it, you know, I, in my opinion, I think the apprehension that that came as a result of the news of the reshoot spreading that they obviously were, you know, and it happens. I'm not throwing blame, but they were obviously fumbling the ball with this film for a lot, probably a lot of different reasons. You're recasting an iconic character. And, you know, that's again, that's no easy task. That's hard to do. I think a combination of all those things together with another question that we've already said is why did we need this? I, in my opinion, Phil, I think that's what I think that's what prevented this movie from becoming becoming a billion dollar film. I really believe that's a lot of the reason why 
that this film wasn't bigger than what it was. Yeah, I think it's really hard to take something old and make it new. Um, Because it's it's one thing to say, all right, do you guys want more Star Wars movies and give us the sequel trilogy? Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in seeing a continuation of that story. But um, if you're then telling us, all right, well, we already have a finished story, but here I can go back and tell you this origin story that you might not have any interest in. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to decide to stay home for the latter. Mm, yeah, good call. And Ron Howard, dude, is a great director. Like he's great had director. some, you know, so many hits over the years. He's a really talented guy. I, I don't know. It's just like, I think a lot of this is about timing. Even with a guy like Ron Howard, with the the resume that he has, I think a lot of it's about timing. And I don't know if the timing was right here, man. If this movie had been made, I don't know. Maybe there's not a good. Maybe if it had been made now, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Like, put some distance between this and the, all the other content that was being thrown at you. Maybe that. Maybe the timing would have been right. Maybe I don't know, dude. I don't know. Maybe I, if this. Maybe this film had begun with Harrison Ford and the whole film was a flashback, dude. That would have been interesting. I I think they got the formula that works with the Disney Plus stuff. I mm-hmm. think everything they've done with Star Wars for Disney Plus has ended up being really successful. And I think that this is one of those things where it would have done really well as a Disney Plus series. I think people would have appreciated it a lot more. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Now that I think about a, a, an older Han at the beginning of the film, imagining back or thinking back about, you know, where he, where he came from, I think that would have made... <laughs> him, him coming in to tuck Kylo in at night to tell him a story. <laughs> Oh, talk about on the nose. Oh, my God. <laughs> that may be perfect. <laughs> oh, I may be here for that. That's it, fun. It, yeah, no, no. Ben in bed and going like, how did you how did you even meet that Wookiee? Son, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's a great. There's a great. Uh, it's very short. And it's on YouTube. It's the it's the scene where Kylo stabs him or puts the puts the lightsaber through him. And then suddenly the moment freezes and you hear that song by the who in the background coming up real low. And this voice go, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. And they put up the solo logo. It's so good, man. <laughs> Teenage wasteland. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> I have to send it to you. It's so good. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, that's it really. Like, Looking back, over, maybe that would have been too much on the nose, Phil. And and if you want to tie this back to the beginning of this episode, I'm pretty sure that is a reference to The Girl Next Door starring Emile Hirsch. Ah, well done. It is well done. Well, that's how we wrap it up, kids. Um, Yeah, I mean... Dude, again, at this, you know, and I've, I've had conversations with people who really can't. And I, you know, it's usually not, well, they got the wrong guy. Ah, it sucked. And ah, what are, what's he there for? No, nah, it's hardly ever that. It just, it doesn't have, it doesn't feel like people want it to feel. It doesn't have that, you know, I don't know, dude. I, I still believe that, that you're asking someone, it's not even about Alden at this point. It's just, People have this vision of their head. They have their memories of Han. They have this, well, this is what Han Solo is. And you're not going to be able to show them anything different. Even if you have the best story by the best screenwriters and the best director of all time, it's still going to be, ah, I don't want that. I want I want Han Solo. I, it's like, I don't want new Coke. I don't yeah. want new Coke. I want original Coke. That's what I want. Yeah. I, some people are just never going to give these kind of things a chance. And I mean, that's fine. Everybody has their choice. You know, I, I get seeing this as something that it feels wholly unnecessary. I get that. Um, but at the same time, I think that this was a perfectly fine movie. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I don't have a lot of problem with it. I mean, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite of the ones that they've done in the Disney universe. Uh, it doesn't have to be like, I, I mean, it's OK with me, but it's I mean, it's not my favorite. Um I mean, yeah, I, it feels like we're done here. It feels like that this is done. This is not going to move forward. 
And, you know, for all I know, and honestly, dude, I think I'm here for a Disney plus some sort of iteration of, of, of this. I think I'm okay with that. And I think you could even fit, I think you could even put, I'm trying to think of how you, how would you fit him in? Whether it's him or Lando, where would you put him? I mean, it couldn't be the Mandalorian unless, well, no, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. I mean, it had to be the Obi-Wan series, wouldn't it? But then Han and Obi-Wan never met. But there was... All right, so we don't know if Obi-Wan and Lando ever met at all, do we? We've never been told if they ever have. Uh, No. I mean, they've, they've done some weird retrofitting of things like that with Obi-Wan. I mean, even if you 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 go into all right but uh how do you explain that leia has already met obi-wan in the first movie and i mean they give a pretty good explanation of why she would she would would never say she's met him um but at the same time it's it is definitely retrofitted in and i'm not one of those people that's like oh it's ruined now um but yeah and 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 i really really like leia in that that show by the way i think that's very very good Yes. Um, but I I can see how people would bump into those retrofitting. Yeah, it it's um and you know honestly they started screwing it all up with the with the second trilogy they did because uh in the original trilogy when Ben tells Luke that I'm sending you to the Dagobah system to train with Yoda, the Jedi master who taught me. And then later on we find out, nah. <laughs> He didn't have nothing to do with it. It was someone named Qui-Gon Jinn that never existed till they created him and retrofit him in. So yeah, yeah, that's fine. And I have I personally have no problem with that. I think all the Qui-Gon stuff is great. And I think it adds dimension uh to the to the Darth Vader character. Um I feel like if anything, the Obi-Wan show does a very good job of bridging the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like nothing has done a better job of bridging those things, but don't make this into a podcast where I sit and gush about how great Obi-Wan is. It's just such a great show. Uh, it is a great show. Yeah. I have no issue with it. I mean, I've got, all right, I got a few, but it's, it's not like, it's nothing like, it's nothing like here where I'm like, this doesn't feel right. Obi-Wan feels fine to me. I don't, I don't come away from that thinking, eh, this is weird. All right, I take that back. Dude, the fight between him and Vader, uh, is it a reach? Uh, Uh, I don't know, dude. What's your thought on that? I love it. I I love the explanation of why he would have never tried to fight him again after Mm -hmm. that. I love the idea that after their fight on uh, Mustafa, that that was that Vader had had been seeking this guy all this time and uh, Obi-Wan has just been hiding in shame. And like the very first episode we get and just like the anxiety all over this man's face when he realizes that Anakin's still alive is so great. And so mm-hmm. when they have the fight and he uh he smashes part of the helmet and you can see Anakin's eyes for the first time um inside the helmet and you're seeing it through the first time through Obi's eyes as well. And you could just see all the guilt over Obi's face. It's so good. It, it, no, I, I loved it. I love that fight. <laughs> You're gushing, Phil. Careful. It's it's great. I'm sorry. It's great. And and the line he gives him where he's just like, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything." Mm-hmm. And 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 Anakin looks up and it's like in that m- brief moment where you feel bad for him, you can see him turn into Vader in those moments, and he's just like, "You don't have anything to feel sorry for." And you can see that he's just like, he was gonna make all the same choices anyway. It didn't matter. He was. It was too late. Yeah. Way too late. Darth Vader's supposed to be a villain, kids, not the good guy. He is not the hero. He did not, you know, you you can say, you can make the case that he found redemption because he threw the emperor down the shaft, but we come to find out the emperor, you know, what, replicated or cloned, so he's not really dead. And then, uh, like, I don't, does, does, that all, does all that undo the heinous stuff he's done? He destroyed entire planets, for God's sake. I don't know. Yeah, um... Yeah, I I don't think that uh, any of that redeems Anakin, but I do think it's a really good story arc. Um, mm. But 
Yeah, no. There, I would throw this at you. Um, if Disney has gotten anything right, it's Darth Vader. I think everything they've done with Darth Vader has been really, really good. I mean, that's from the scene of him in Rogue One, the scenes they've done with him in any of the the, the Disney Plus stuff, uh, all of the stuff they did with him in Obi-Wan. They've been completely knocking it out of the park with anything Vader related. Hmm. Yeah, that's well, because he's. I mean, is he the most compelling character in this universe? Yeah, but I would say that uh, the the first time I was legitimately terrified by Darth Vader was watching him murder <laughs> those murder all of those people in Rogue One when yeah. he appears in the dark. I'm just like, oh no, oh. now I get it. Like this guy is terrifying. Um, like even when you get the stuff in Obi Wan where he's coming through that city and you can see how how afraid people are of him, I'm just like, no, I think Disney has gotten the Darth Vader stuff perfect yeah it's it's pitch black and you see the red saber just light up and lights up the whole room when he turns it on jeez yeah uh the i think that's episode two of obi-wan when he finally catches up to obi-wan and he burns him yes <sighs> yeah i i love what disney has done with vader because again he's supposed to be a heel he's supposed to be terrifying that's what he's supposed to be there was a reason why he was the most despicable scourge in the galaxy. There's a reason for that. I mean, we get to see it now. I mean... Hey, the guy murdered younglings. He did. <laughs> he murdered younglings. Still one of the most bizarre moments in any film I've ever seen. It's Dude, it's bizarre. Like... <laughs> Master Skywalker, what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> it's... It, it feels like that entire scene was mishandled. Like, and then we saw the bodies later, right? We didn't see blood, I don't think, but like they were just laying around. But I'm yeah. like, I can't believe, I can't believe we did this. Like, I don't know. Don't get me started. There's a reason why we haven't done the other film, the other uh, 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 films there, Phil, because that, that to me, that to me felt like we got to turn him heel. Go, go, go. Now, now, now. Like, go, go. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. I swear that whole movie feels like that to me with him. Uh, yeah, I, if anything, I feel like the biggest issue with the prequel trilogy is that you could have started the prequel trilogy from the second movie and then you didn't have to speed into uh, turning him from this guy that you've already built like the sympathy story for into this like evil um, dictator. Um, mm. I think that I think his turn works in the third movie, but I do think some of it happened fast. And I get we're supposed to we're supposed to go from him killing uh that entire village in the second movie and see that he was already there, but and some of it happens a bit too fast. Yeah. And yeah. I, I personally, I was one of those people cuz I know people like, "Ah, but I mean, did we really need to see him kill kids?" I'm like, "Yeah, but we've also seen this guy literally commit genocide like <laughs> yeah it's just that we didn't we didn't have to, we didn't have to watch the people blowing up we just saw him blowing up planets yeah and i mean we didn't we didn't see him kill the kid we just saw him uh imply that he was getting ready to kill the kid yeah 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 and i mean look i think i think they had to do something drastic because we had spent two movies with with anakin um we literally watched this watched him grow up. We we started with him as a kid. And so I don't think that you could have gotten to making him Vader without having him do something as heinous. Like and I know some people are just like, oh, but it's a kid. And I'm like, yeah, but for a lot of people, there's nothing more evil than killing a kid. And it's also very metaphorical because it's also him metaphorically killing his innocence because that's how he started in the franchises as a kid. Yep. Very true. Well, kids, um, that's solo. And, you know, I, we, we could talk for another 30 minutes about the little inside jokes. There's some, there's some nice humor in this film. Um, the stuff with Lando's great. Um, Alden is, 
doing a bang up job as Han. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like we talk about all that. It's just going to be circling back. I don't have a whole lot left here. Like I don't yeah. hate this film. It's not what I thought. It's not what I hoped it would be. But I don't know what I hoped it would be. I, again, I was like, "Why are we doing this?" Yeah, I think some of the some of the comedy in this movie was legitimately funny. Um, I don't know why every time I see uh, at the beginning of the movie where he tries to. Uh, he tries to turn the speeder to his side to get out of the alley and it doesn't quite make it. Every time I see that scene, I laugh at it because it's like, we've seen that in so many movies where, you know, the protagonist somehow makes this this work like just by turning a little bit, getting out of a narrow spot. And like, <laughs> I, I think a lot of funny moments is in this movie of Han trying to outsmart somebody, but it's just not quite working out. And it's funny every time. Yeah. And him using the word kid by the last scene of the film, he uses the word kid. One of the last scenes, which is nice, nice touch. So yeah, they're, they're doing a lot to throw a lot of eggs in this movie to remind you of who you're looking at and what this guy's going to become down the road. So, but again, Phil, Disney's got the budget. They want to make the movie. You're not going to stop them. They're going to make it. I mean, it's not like, you know, this is not, this is not a creative team shopping this to different studios. These is, I mean, of course, Disney's doing their thing. They're self-funded or not self-funded, but you know what I mean? They're doing, they're in-house. They're doing their own thing. I mean, whether or not they do, it's depending on whether or not they feel like doing it. So if they wanted to make a part two, they'd make a part two. And you could argue money all day, but if they felt they had a good story and the right creative team, they'd make a part two. But it looks like it's not going to happen, not in the cards. Um, yeah. One of the, one of the Easter eggs in this movie that I felt was, Pretty pretty unnecessary was having Beckett use the same disguise that Lando uses, and uh, yes, <laughs> and Return of the Jedi. And it's like, okay, I understand what this is in the Easter egg too, but do we really need that? Did not need it. Did not need it at all. And Han even uses the words "thermal detonator," and he goes like that, and then she's like, "That's a rock," and you just made a clicking sound with your mouth. <laughs> that was great. I'm sorry, but. Again, I think all of those moments where Han tried to outsmart somebody and they immediately call him out on it. Hilarious. I thought she was just like, yeah, you just made a clicking sound with your mouth. And he's like, no, I didn't. <laughs> he just throws a rock through the window afterwards. I thought that was great. And when she, when he did the, sh- sh- you could hear the crowd go, oh, like they've totally fell for it. It was great. <laughs> it was totally, it was really, it was really great. I love that. Yeah, and it's I got mean, moments. As great moments, I think in the at least in that first ten or fifth twenty minutes, um, he does several things and it looks like he's gonna get away. I mean, like when he when he gets all the way up to the uh to the gate and he uh he hands over the coaxium to get through the gate, and it looks like they're gonna get away. And as soon as he gets through the door, they act they they yank Kira back in. Um, I think mm-hmm. all that stuff is so good because it's just like, yeah, no, he he's. He's a scoundrel, but he hasn't figured it out yet. He hasn't gotten to the point where, you know, he knows how to smooth talk his way out of everything yet. And everything he does still has consequences. Yeah, they point that out in this movie, right? That he's not there yet. He's not. Yeah. Which, you know, makes sense because he's still figuring out who he is. What about the coaxium, man? It, it, have you ever even heard of this before this movie? <laughs> no. Thank you. It was a big, it was a big to do throughout this movie. It was a big, it was a focal point. Yeah. I mean, all the way throughout the movie. Um, I thought the heist scene that they did early in the movie with, uh, Beckett's initial gang was great. Uh, Mm -hmm. I thought that heist was really cool. The, the, the train that like, I don't know, like it pivoted to get around the mountains. I thought that scene was really cool. Mm Mm-hmm. Again, there's there's so much to like about this movie. I think visually it's really it's a really good looking movie. There are several really good action scenes in it. Um yeah, there's a, a lot to like about this movie. I think if you're hung up on I don't want a Han Solo prequel movie, I don't think you're ever gonna get past that. Well, kids, never you fear, because we're gonna circle back to Brandon Routh. Brandon Routh's having he's doing just fine. Really good actor. He's still one of the best looking dudes you've ever seen. He still looks like Superman. And that movie is 
well, Superman Returns is another topic for another time. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things, like many things out there on the internet that has its defenders. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but at least this is not that. It's not, hey, Alden, welcome to the set. You need to be Harrison Ford now. Like, <laughs> you need to walk like him. You got to talk just like him. Hold your head like this. You know, oh, at least it wasn't that, dude. It was kind of, you know what I compare this to in, with him in this movie? Chris Pine doing William Shatner. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're like, it's just close enough where you know who he's playing, but it doesn't make you go, oh, come on. Yeah. Like, there's a, there's a couple moments, but I don't think it's egregious. Yeah, and I I really enjoyed Chris Pine as uh, as uh, Kurt in those yeah. movies. Yeah, um, same. And in those movies, of course, they have their critics as well. Um, I don't know where you fall in that rank, but um, I enjoy those Star Trek movies. Yeah, it's it's the J.J. Abrams hanging off a cliff, running and hanging off a cliff. Those are the two big things with him, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lens flares everywhere. Lens flares. Lens flares. Yes, the lens flare. Oh, I forgot the fabric. Yeah, the close up. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, it it definitely has all of uh JJ's uh pastiche, if that's what you want to call it. Ooh, good word. Great word. It has all of that all across the movie, but uh, I do enjoy those Star Trek movies. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Same. Actually. Yeah. Great cast. That's another top another time as well. Well, kids, there you have it. Um, there's Solo. And again, it looks like we're done with this. We're done with this uh, little corner of the throwback retrofit universe. But who knows? Stay tuned. You never can tell what will happen right. in the future. I, I have my quote. I've been sitting here trying to Google it this whole time. Uh-oh. I Go. have my quote from, from Kathleen on, are we getting Donald Glover still? And her response as of May 2022 was, you need to ask Donald. Uh, he's the one that holds all the cards here, but there, there's no movement. I will say that honestly, but it's not that there's a lack of trying. It's just that he's a very busy guy. He's got another series and I think other things, and then he'll come our way. So patiently waiting. Um, that actually makes me optimistic because he just finished up um, Atlanta. So maybe not Atlanta. Uh, the series finale was... Uh, Last year, he'll be ready to do the Lando movie show or whatever it is. Sounds like it's going to be a show. Does sound like it's going to be a show. Yeah, and actually, it does say here planned for a Disney Plus series. So maybe now that he's freed up some time, we're going to get the Lando Disney Plus series. And a Lando series can be adjacent to the trilogies. It doesn't have to be directly connected to the trilogies. It can be adjacent and still work. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's what a spinoff is, kids. That's a definition. You don't need the spinoff for the regular continuity of the the main series you're talking about. It's something that happens in conjunction with it. So there you go. I'm here for that. Well, Phil, let's take this home. Give me your last word on Solo. Uh, I think if you just go into this movie just looking for a fun movie to watch one day, I think it's very enjoyable. Um, if you are someone that is like a hardcore Star Wars fan that's been around since the original trilogy, yeah, I think it's going to be hard to let go of some things and watch this movie. But I think it's a fun movie. Um, I think there's a lot to like about it. I'm a hardcore Star Wars fan that's been around since the original trilogy. And I'm okay with this movie. I don't hate it. Um, I think like Phil said, if if you're going into something thinking you're going to enjoy it, you might have a fun time. But if you go into it thinking you're going to hate it, you're probably going to be right too. I think yeah. it just depends on what your mindset is. I, the cast is great. The story's fine. Uh, some on-the-nose references that get a little, you know, a little too much at times. But the story's okay and, and the acting's really good and the jokes are funny. And, you know, I, is this is this A-plus for me? Not No, not at all. But again... It, it, you know, I don't think it deserves what it got, but I can understand, as we said before, a combination of varying factors why this movie wasn't a monster box office smash. I totally get it. I totally get it, and I understand it. Um, but I think it's well done. So, 
kids, if you haven't seen this film, give it a chance, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. Don't not have seen it because you're a Harrison Ford guy. I'm a Harrison Ford guy as well, but come on, man. Give this movie a chance. I think it's worth your time, and you come back and tell me what you think later. I endorse it. How about that? It's all you need to know. We'll see what happens moving forward with this universe. Can't wait to see what the next chapters look like. But until that moment comes, that is Solo. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Check out our social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at 6 Podcast. We'll see you next time.